Hey, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to wrap up the um, upper link assembly by adding some bolts and nuts and placing and mating all of our, our bearings and shafts and clips um, and that sort of thing to finish off the assembly. So to start with, we're going to open up our uh, upper link assembly, one we made in the end of the last video uh, with the three components, the two side plates and the middle block. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to download some nut models. So um, we're going to get some nylock nuts uh, which suit these holes. Uh, these, um, so we've got these 5.1 millimeter holes here, so we're going to have 5 millimeter bolts. Uh, so we'll need some M5 nuts as well. So first things first, we will go to our fasteners supplier. We'll look for some appropriate nuts. So we like to use nylock nuts, um, basically nylon insert lock nuts or nylock nuts. Uh, they're basically like a normal steel nut, but there's a nylon insert in here, which basically uh, prevents the nuts from vibrating loose. A normal nut in a high vibration environment, it will shake loose and fall off at the end of your bolt. Use a nylock nut, and that's not the case. They're vibration resistant. They will stay tight, uh, even in a high vibration environment. So we like to buy these ones. They're fantastic. Only downside is usually only can use them a few times um, before the nylon wears out and then they're no longer effective. Um, cool, so we'll scroll down here, we'll look for the M5 variant and we see that our standard is DIN 985. Just like normal, we then look up a standard PDF here for DIN 985 and we have all of our dimensions, heights, widths, flat to flat distance, point to point distance, that kind of thing. So we can reference this if we need to. And straight after that, we jump over to our part community website we search for DIN 985, the standard, and then M5, and then we find uh, some models that we can download. Oh yeah, so uh, we'll scroll down to the M5 area, we'll click on the M5 nut, and then we will scroll off again, check our format is SolidWorks, and then we'll click on the download button, exit out of here, and we'll click download. Cool, then we'll open up this zip so we'll cut it from the downloads folder and we'll chuck it into our working folder and we will extract the files here and delete the files we know we need and rename this part so we go let's go chassis 21 02 underscore 01 underscore 07 and then we'll go uh, din 985 underscore nylock underscore m5 cool so now we have the nylock nut model we'll go back to our um, model here so i'll quickly mention um, there is something called the uh, solidworks toolbox which has bolts and nut models here that you can import directly um, there's even the din library here um, this can be good uh, to use we've found with our team um, working with grabcad and working with lots of people um, sometimes if not everyone on your team has their toolbox uh, configured correctly, you can sometimes have some uh, errors basically. So if somebody else opens my models and I've got toolbox bolts uh, in my model, if their uh, toolbox isn't configured the same way, it might give them the wrong bolt sizes and stuff like this. So what I'm going to recommend we do is we don't use the toolbox bolts. Although they're highly convenient, we've found they've been quite a hassle uh, to work with uh, in, a, in a team environment. Um, so what I'm going to show you guys, it does take a little bit longer, but we're just going to um, import all these bolts uh, individually. Um, that way we also get the exact right bolt models. Sometimes the toolbox, for example, it doesn't have the nylock nuts we need anyway. Um, and some of the countersink bolts and stuff they don't have so um, if we can just get into the habit of downloading the bolts specifically uh, that we need and then importing them as solid uh, models, um, that's going to work better for us. So I'm going to go to assembly here. I'm going to click insert components. Then I'm going to click on the nylock nuts that we just downloaded. And now I'm going to, um, I'm going to click on this pin again and I'm going to insert just uh, six straight away. So I'm just going to click here six times and we'll just insert six like that and then we'll click on tick. 
Cool. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to place the nuts on the specific holes that we're going to use. So I'm going to click on the back face first. You can see we've got three holes here that we we'll want nuts on, so I'm just going to click on there. And then I'm going to click on a cylindrical face and this hole here. And I'm going to click lock rotation and then tick. And I'm going to do that for each of these nuts. So although it, it's, it is a little more time consuming than using the um, SolidWorks toolbox, it's still relatively quick and easy to do. So click lock rotation tick. The reason we're locking the rotation, if we left the rotation unlocked, then these nuts would be underdefined. Um, and we just want these nuts to be fully defined, so we're going to lock their rotation as well. So we'll keep doing this. A little bit repetitive, but we'll get there. Uh, note how if I, you know, I place these nuts in quickly, um, we can flip them around if we click on this button here. And you can see we'll just flip the orientation there. So it's always possible. It doesn't really matter what orientation you um, place the bolts into the model in the first place. You can always flip them later. So I'm just going to flip them around like this. And then we'll chuck them all in their respective locations. Cool, and then the last one. So the reason we do the nuts before the bolts is because now we can take a measurement. Uh, I'll just finish off this quickly. There you go. What we can do, we can take a measurement uh, to get our bolt length that we need because you can buy bolts in different lengths. So I'm going to click this evaluate button. I'm going to click the measure. And I'm going to measure from the edge of this face to the base of the bolt. So the, the thread length basically and we can see this is a normal distance of 11.9 millimeters so we're going to buy a 12 millimeter m5 bolt for that application so that's why we place the nuts in first so we can take that measurement and now we know we need a 12 millimeter bolt so i'm just going to uh, save that quickly just so we don't forget and i'm going to go back to our website here i'm going to look up the bolts we need so again um, going back to united fasteners we're going to look up our M5 bolts of length. Oh, good. We've got 12 millimeter length. Perfect. That's what we need. And then we will just scroll down here and we'll go, okay, these are all the different types. Uh, we got one here. These are some different sort of materials here. Um, but we got the DIN 912 compliance again. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our part community again. And we're going to look up the... Um, DIN 912. So we've just looked up DIN 912 in here and we've input M5 uh, X12 as well to get the exact length we need. So now I'm going to click on the top one here and now we should be able to download uh, the CAD model. So we'll go to the CAD download button, click on that and then we will wait for the download. We'll click on the download button. Again we'll grab our zip folder and we will dump it into the working folder here. And then I will delete the files we don't care about and we'll rename this to our part naming convention. Of course, number eight. And we'll do this is DIN 912 and it's a socket head cap screw SHCS. And then we'll just do M5, oops, M5 uh, cross 12, something like that. That's all our information in there. Now we'll head back to our SolidWorks model and we will start putting these bolts in place. So let's go insert components again. We'll click on our bolt model and we'll click on this little pin and we'll place six in one, two, three, four, five, six, just like that. We'll click tick and then we'll add in all the mates. So we'll firstly start. Uh, let's go cylindrical onto this one. Doesn't really matter what order you guys do this in. Make sure you lock the rotation still. Uh, and then we'll click on this back face here of that recess and the back face of the bolt head. And that's in place. And then we'll just keep doing that uh, for all of the bolts where it's required. So even though we've got some excess bolt holes here, I'm not sure how we ended up with that, but uh, we did. <laughs> so only use three of the the five side holes here in, uh, in this side plate so I'm just locking the rotation doesn't matter which order you uh, click on the faces um, for each of the two faces you can do it either way 
And for these ones, we'll just um, probably need to flip the bolts around like that and then lock the rotation. So it might take a bit of a time just to sort of fiddle with it before it's right, but you guys can see what the end goal is here, really. We're just trying to get these in place as they would be in real life. Um, and you can see this is why the counterboards are so nice, because these bolt heads just slot into them really well. Um, so that the heads are kind of flush with the outside, it looks really good. There we go. And then we will fasten this last one, like that. And then we can also see that um, the bolts here, the ends of the bolts, come right nice and all the way through that nut there. The, the key thing is you just want to make sure that the bolt is long enough so that some of the, th the, so the threads contact this nylon, this blue nylon part. If the bolt's too short and it only, so let's take a quick section view of this actually, um, just to show you all. So um, yeah, it's a bit of a strange model here, but you know if the bolt stopped short here, it wouldn't contact the nylon because the nylon only starts at this point here. So you need to make sure your bolts are long enough so they come all the way through the nut and actually thread into the nylon part. Otherwise, it's just like a normal nut and it will fall off. So that's pretty critical. So for all your bolts, you want to make sure that's how it's done. Cool, and now we will... Actually, just before we move on, we've got a lot of parts here, so we can add these to folders. So I'm going to select those all and uh, add to a new folder. I'm going to call those ones bolts. Just to tidy this up a little bit, and then we'll call these lot yeah, nuts. There we go. All right, and now we'll just place our final components. So we'll let's grab those bearings that we we had in the first one. So another way to place multiple parts, so we can just place one. This menu will disappear, and then if you hold the control key and drag on another component and then let go, it'll sort of copy the part, which is quite nice and quick. So we can do that too. And then we'll just add some relations. We'll lock these as well, and we will. I like to add mates where they'd actually be limited in real life, if that makes sense. So, you know, I could limit the front face of this to be mated with this, but instead I'm just going to mate the bearing to the back of that recess instead, because uh, that's how it would be. That's what would be restricting its position in real life. Kind of makes sense to do it that way. Um, so, we'll click on this back edge and then the back face of this, and then we'll click tick. So the bearings are in place. And then we'll place the larger bearings that we got from the second video. Just like this, we'll hold the control key to copy those. And then we'll mate them in place, just like this, locking the rotation. Let's mate it to the back lip here that we talked about. And then we'll chuck that in like that. And similarly with this bearing, we will put it over this side, locking its rotation. And then we will mate the back face of the bearing with the front of that lip there. Cool, so we're almost there now. So we've gotten to this point. Uh, and now we're going to add in the pin and circlip. So we will insert those. So we'll get this middle pivot pin part that we made in the first video. And we will mate that to the middle of these bearings here, locking its rotation. And then I'll make this circlip groove face here. Oops, not quite. Select that face there. And then we'll select the front of the bearing there. And that puts it nice and in place. You can see our grooves here are nice and aligned with the front, um, with the inner races of those bearings, which is really nice. And then lastly, we will insert the circlips, these ones here. And um, I might click the little pin this time. We'll click once, and we'll click again. Click the tick button. And we can make these ones in place. So we can click on the middle, click on another cylindrical surface like that, and lock its rotation, and click on a couple of faces to finish it off. There we go. And we can do the same with this circlip on the other side. So this will take a bit of time uh, to get the hang of doing the mates like this, but um, you'll get quicker in time. Um, and then we'll just mate that 
So there, and that's all done. So that's that's the first assembly. Um, well done, <laughs> we made it. So we'll try a quick save, and uh, yeah, what a what a cool assembly. So that's um that's what it looks like. Um, basically, the neat thing is um, I'll open up the suspension uh, real quick. We're only going to make one of these, and it's the exact same assembly. Uh, copied here in four places, which is awesome. Um, so we only need to draw it once, basically. Um, as you can see, we've actually got four of the exact same assembly. All these upper links are exactly the same. So you've actually made probably like 50% of the suspension system now, which is awesome. So I'm going to end this video here. Uh, and in the next video, we'll probably look at uh, starting to draw up the front leg uh, assembly.